So BitTorrent used to be huge, you know, we all remember, what, maybe 2012, 2013 when it peaked, when everyone was pirating all of their music and shows and anime, if that's your thing. Ever since then, it's been on a huge decline, primarily because of Netflix, Spotify, uh, other software as a service type companies that make it cheap and easy, you know, to get everything you need. But I mean, we all knew it was the case that as far as BitTorrent goes, the vast majority of content was pirated shows and music. Um, and we never really got to the phase where people used it casually for general cases, not just for piracy. Um, I think given a bit more time, we might have come to that point, but never came to be. But anyway, this video isn't about streaming sites or piracy or even torrenting. This video is about the interplanetary file system, which is really cool and really exciting. So let's get into it. So basically IPFS is very similar to torrenting functionally in that you can upload a file, so to speak, and then other people can download it directly from you with no middleman. It's similar to the seeding concept in torrenting. It's, in fact, it's exactly the same. The difference is the method of addressing this content that you upload. If somebody were to upload a file to IPFS and you were to upload the same file, even though you both have no relation to each other, those two addresses in IPFS will be exactly the same. Let's say I give my address to my friend to download a file that I've uploaded, it might be the case that he'll download it from the other guy that had uploaded that file, even though they have no relationship with each other. But that in that way, it's content-based indexing rather than location-based. So it doesn't matter where the file is, it only matters that it exists within the network. Um, I think it's really cool and it's the future, but that's enough technical stuff. Let's get into how we can actually start using it. So to get started, we're going to want to download the uh, IPFS companion extension for Chrome, but note that we're going to want to get it on Brave browser because Brave is awesome and they actually built in support already for initializing your own IPFS node. This is really cool and I love Brave. It's my default browser for everything and it should be yours too. Yeah, so once that's installed, it'll say use a Brave local IPFS node, which is what I was talking about. And once we click that, it'll actually spin up an IPFS node from within the browser. So we can become a node on the IPFS network without actually having to install any desktop application. This is really just the easiest way to get a node going on your machine without really much setup at all. So once we have it installed and it spins up that node, it'll open up this window and we can click files to enter the dashboard. And I just want to take a moment to appreciate how nice this interface is. I mean, look at that loading animation. Now that we've entered the dashboard, we can see our list of files. There isn't anything yet. So I'm going to start by importing a file. Um, I'm just going to import an image, uh, one of my wallpapers. And we can see it's been imported just like that. It's as simple to use as Dropbox or any other file sharing platform. So beneath the title of the file, we can see that long string of characters. That's actually the CID, the content ID of our file. That is based on a hash of the content of the file itself, like I was saying earlier. So if anyone else uploads this wallpaper, the same wallpaper, that same ID will be generated. Now I can take that ID and send it to someone. If they have that, then they can start downloading from the IPFS network. So I'm going to copy this address and then try to access it on my phone to see if I can actually see this file from another device on another network, because I'll be connected to mobile data. So let me take my phone out and then if we visit that address, then we'll be able to see if we can actually download that image. And as you can see, there it is just like that. Downloaded it directly from my computer with no server. Now coming back to our dashboard in Brave, if we right click our file, we can click set pinning. So the way IPFS works on the browser is that it saves your files in the cache. And once you clear that cache or once you reach one gigabyte I think is the limit it'll begin clearing out those files so if I want to be a host for a file permanently I can just choose to pin it and that's terminology used across IPFS not just within the browser now if we take a look at our status we can see that we're connected to IPFS and we've discovered 436 peers meaning we currently have a list of 436 peers and all of their associated files and if we move to the status page which I really like we can actually see our peer ID so our peer ID is basically what it sounds like. It's just the identifier for us, for our device. Every IPFS node has a peer ID. And then if we move to the peers page, I've said it once and I'll say it again, Brave really did a good job with this UI because they give us a little map here so we can see exactly which peers we're connected to around the world. It's super cool. 
Then finally, if we inspect this file we uploaded, we can actually take a look at the CID as well as the chunks that it's stored it in. So I said IPFS was very similar to torrenting and I meant it because it actually supports chunking files. So you'll notice that each of these links that it lists out are 256 kilobytes. And that means that our file that we uploaded, which is 11 megabytes, was actually deconstructed into 43 files on IPFS. This means that if somebody gets our parent CID, which is the one that I initially had and attempts to download that, it'll actually attempt to download it in these 43 chunks, meaning it doesn't need to download from one person. It could connect to multiple peers and simultaneously download it in a similar fashion to torrenting. Yeah, and that's pretty much how you can start using IPFS right now. But you might be asking, well, why would I use IPFS to transfer a file, let's say to my friend, when I could just use Google Drive or Dropbox or something like that? And that is true, you could, but there are a few use cases that I could think of right now. One of which is, let's say you need to transfer some really large 4K video that's 100 gigabytes to your friend. How are you gonna do that with Google Drive? You're gonna to have to upload it to Google and then they are gonna to have to download it from Google and that's gonna take a long time compared to just opening up a port directly to your friend's PC and just transferring it directly. And I guess secondly, it's a matter of control, right? When you upload a file to Google like that or Dropbox, uh, they really have control over that file. Number one, you're making it accessible to them. Maybe it's something you don't want them to be able to see. You know, you're trusting their company with your data. Secondly, they can take it down whenever they want, so you can't really be secure that it'll be safe there, you know? I think IPFS is a good step towards uh, bringing the power back to the people. I sound like a, <laughs> I sound like a revolutionist now, but maybe I am. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'm going to be making another video pretty soon about how to actually implement IPFS into your code so you can have an application uh, that can do things like have a decentralized backend. Maybe I'll go even deeper. We'll see. Um, but yeah, stay tuned.